whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Cooperation on the part of law enforcement agencies everywhere plays a vital part in detection of crime and apprehension of the criminal. During May, an outbreak of crime near the Mexican border emphasized the importance of such cooperation. All right, ladies, get out of that car and start moving down the hill. Same M.O. again. Man standing in the road with a stop sign waving a red flag. And the woman stopped her car, and that's it? Yeah, that was it. And that makes five in the last two weeks. Did you get a description? Well, no. It was pretty general, like most of the others. She was too scared to be much help. Well, I can understand that when you got a gun pointed at you. I put out an APB in her car. Do you want to talk to the woman? No, no. I got another idea. How far is it to the border? About three miles. Why don't you stay with this case? I'm going to New Mexico and talk to Captain Gonzalez. Get out of the car. Well, what's wrong? Get out of the car. Hal, please do as he says. And you, you go with him. Okay, mister, what's next? Take a walk. Start walking in that direction and don't bother to look back. You might get yourself shot for your trouble. Hal, come on, don't do anything foolish, darling. Come on, let's go. Come on. Hello, who are you? Let's sit down. Sure. Nice to see you in Mexico, even if it's an official business. Well, I might as well get down to cases. We've run into an epidemic of stolen cars right close to your border. I know. I posted a list of your stolen cars at all our checkpoints. The M.O. is always the same. 
Fellow's got a road worker stop sign and a red flag. When the victim stops, he pulls a gun on him and that's it. I see. You know, we haven't even got a good description of this guy. Have any of the cars been uh, recovered? No, they seem to drop out of sight completely. So, well, there's only one explanation. You think that the thieves have found a way of getting the cars into Mexico? Yeah, that's about it. That's why I wanted you to meet me here, so we could see what happened. Also, we can't be seen. We'll be happy to help you then. My entire highway patrol is at your service. Thanks a lot, Julio. We'll be in touch with you. In the meantime, I'll contact my men in Mexico City. Yeah, that's the logical place, all right. Small cars are in demand down there. We'll check around. Good. Thanks a lot. You bet. happened so fast. We weren't sure just what the man looked like. Well, I try to think. Did he have light hair or dark hair? I don't know. It may be pretty mad, and I might have tried to jump him if it hadn't been for Nora. Oh, Mrs. Franks was right. If you try to jump a man with a gun pointed at, you'd be a big mistake. Excuse me a minute. 3016 to 2150. 2150 by. Hold up and stolen car on Highway 26. Victim's now at the Price Place Junction of Granada Way. I'll be there right away. 10-4? 10-4. APB on the stolen car. Did you get a good description of the suspect? No, not good. They can't quite agree on it. Well, let's see if we can turn it down. Mr. and Mrs. Franks, this is Mr. Matthews, the highway patrol. How do you do? Mr. Matthews? Mr. and Mrs. Franks, this is the second car that's been stolen in this area today. Now, it could be the same man. It could be two different people. Or an organized gang of car thieves. No, it was just one man that robbed us. Well, we need a good description of that man. Well, as I said, I was pretty mad. That's not going to identify him, I think. What did he look like? He, uh, he wasn't as tall as I am, I know that. But I can't be sure about his face or the color of his hair. All I could see was that gun pointed straight at us. How about you? Well, I've been trying to picture his face again, just as it looked on the, on the road. I think Hal is right. He was smaller than he is. Well, was he wearing a hat? Yes, he was. Oh, what kind? Well, it was a soft blue cap. That's why I couldn't tell what color his hair was. How about his clothes? Well, he had a brown leather jacket, a blue shirt, and brown pants. Anything else? Uh, any scars? Did he have a mustache? No, he didn't have a mustache. If you saw this man again, would you know him? Yes, I'd know him. I'm sure of it. I'd remember the way he looked at Hal. I thought he was going to shoot him. Let's talk about the car. Any holes in the upholstery? I don't think so. Anything spilled on the floor that might mark it? Oh, no. We've been very careful. Is there anything special about the car that would help us identify it? Well, I gave him the color and the year and make and the license number. Yeah, but suppose that in a couple of hours your car's painted a different color. It's got new plates, new registration. How would you know it if you saw it again? Well, there's a dent from the rear fender. Well, that could be straightened out. Oh, and I guess I don't know. Wait a minute. I do know how I could identify the car. How? Oh. Our youngster used to play with a cigarette lighter. We were afraid he'd burn himself, so... Uh, I disconnected the cigarette lighter and taped the ends. Well, that gives us something to go on. We'll try and get your car back for you. Thanks very much. Come on. You folks wait here. There'll be a man after my car. He'll drive you into town. Hey, it looks like a really nice, clean job. You said it. And the motor is smooth as silk. Top price for this one. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, any uh, problems? Uh, no, man and wife. Uh, where's the other one? Oh, we've got it uh, out already. Good. Curtis is on the phone. He's standing by in Guadalupe. What do you want me to tell him? Well, let me see. It'll take about four hours to get this baby dressed for traveling, which should bring you to Guadalupe about 3.30. Tell him this one's Class A. Okay. And that means you've no time to loaf. 
This one's perfect except for the paint job, so get out your spray gun and go to work. The two automobile thefts in one day gave Dan Matthews an opportunity to put his theory to a test. With the cooperation of the Mexican Highway Patrol, it might be possible to discover whether or not there was an outlet across the border for these stolen cars. How are we doing? We have set up roadblocks at these points. Here, here, and here. And in some cases, double roadblocks. Good. There's nothing anyone can do with a stolen car in this section. They have to go south to find a market. Yeah, that's right. All this, of course, is based on the possibility that the thieves are bringing the cars into Mexico to sell. Which, under ordinary circumstances, is not as easy as it sounds. Yeah, I know that. Look, the holdup occurred right here. But this time, I think we got a little luck. Pass report. Yeah, the victims were picked up by a passing motorist. They flagged the highway patrol car five minutes after the robbery. Highway 26, that's somewhat of an isolated area. And in ten minutes, we had that whole area completely sealed off. Now, if they didn't hide the car in a haystack, there's only one place to take it. That's across the border. Oh, I see what you mean. Look, with the time they've changed the serial number, repainted it, and sold it to somebody in Mexico, we're going to have a tough time finding it. There is a little hope, though. What? The cigarette lighter behind the dash has been disconnected and taped. <laughs> Boy, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel on this one. I'll have my men advice of that. In the meantime, there's nothing we can do here. Shall we check roadblocks? Can we use your undercover car? All right. Let's go. I tell you, it's a waste of time changing those tires. And it cuts down the profits, too. And it cuts down on the possibility of all of us winding up in the clink. I think you uh, worry too much. The paint dry? Sure. I'll put the new registration certificate in the holder. And I've got a Mexican entry permit to match. I still say you worry too much. What goes? Dave thinks it's a waste of time and money to change tires and have permits printed. Oh, well, that's one of the troubles with Dave. He can only see as far as the end of his nose. Look, you... You uh, look. Suppose Joe, owner of this car, drove it through some nice soft ground near his house, and the cops pick up the tire prints. And suppose they check those prints against the tires on this car. Not a chance. There's always a chance. Besides, you don't risk meeting a roadblock in one of these cars, Davy boy. I do. What are you giving me? The only place they check these cars is at border checkpoints. And you're already in Mexico. So what? So what? You haven't hit a roadblock in Mexico since we've been working this deal. There's always the first time. That's why we have to catch every possible identification point and wipe it out. We can't afford to overlook a single bet. Well, any luck? The boys found a cigarette lighter out of order, all right, but it turned out to be one of those foreign cars. Well, they might be able to change the color of the car, but I'm sure they can't change the size of it. Outside of that, everything seems to be pretty well covered. Let's check other blocks, huh? Okay. The paint's okay. Everything's ship -shape. I don't think we've missed a single bet. Well, it's all yours. Watch your step. Don't worry, I'll see you later. Let's get to work on the one in the barn. I want it ready by the time Yvonne gets back. Can't we wait until tomorrow? I'm bushed. I can't afford to keep a stolen car a minute longer than I have to. <sighs> okay, let's get to work.
Good afternoon. I'm sorry to inconvenience you like this, but we have to examine every car that passes this way today. Sounds exciting. Has there been a robbery? Something along that line. Would you mind stepping out of the car for a moment? Oh, no, not at all. Thank you. May I see your driver's license and entry permit? Yes, of course. Check the cigarette lighter. Mrs. Yvonne Hooper, San Francisco. That's right. Do you own the car, Mrs. Hooper? No, my husband does. But I own my husband, so I guess I own the car. What is your destination in Mexico? Mexico City. It's a wonderful place. It is indeed. Staying very long? Well, it depends on how much time off my husband can get. He's meeting me next week. Thank you, Miss Hooper. I hope you enjoy your visit in Mexico. This could be the end of the tape lighter. The car checks out. I don't believe we have to detain you any longer. Everything all right? Yeah, everything's all right now. You may go now, Mrs. Hooper. Thank you so much, and I'm sorry we detained you. It's quite all right. You found something? A disconnected lighter with taped ends. Could it be a coincidence? No, we gotta be sure. She had an entry permit, didn't she? Yes, it indicated she went through the border about two hours ago. We should call the border, see if it's legitimate. In the meantime, let's see what she does with the car and where she goes. I she doesn't take the same road and go through the same roadblock. No, but it'll be easy to keep track of her now. I'll put a tail on this stolen car till we find out who gets her and who sells it. Okay. Have them discontinue the roadblocks and follow close behind. Habla Capitán González. Descontinúen el bloqueo. Sí, y síganos de cerca. Esperen órdenes. I wonder where she's going. We're only a few miles from the border. Looks like we found their hideout. Capitán González, a carros de patrulla número uno y número dos. Estacionen sus automóviles cerca del mío y luego prosigan hacia el bosque.
Have any trouble? No, but I think they're getting wise. I went through a couple of tough roadblocks. I don't like that. Neither do I. This will hold us for a while. We'll let things cool off a bit. I'll be right back. That's for sure. I got tear gas bombs in one of the other cars. Sanchez! Trae las bombas lagrimosas! Well, this one's dead. I'll get the coroner and ambulance. Look at the king. Thanks for your help, Julio. It was a pleasure. You know, I wish you'd have stolen my car. It needs a new paint job. See Highway Patrol again next week. Until then, remember. Reckless driving doesn't determine who's right, only who's left. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.
whenever the laws of any state are broken, a duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. Organized crime as such is seldom encountered by law enforcement agencies in the rural areas. For the most part, the responsibilities of the highway patrol are traffic safety. This is especially true during the harvest season, when the traffic problems are intensified by the increase in truck traffic throughout the farming areas. Fresh picked crops are carried from farms to markets, and labor contractors are constantly transporting itinerant farm workers to their camps and to the fields. The contractor serves a useful purpose during the harvest season. He furnishes workers in numbers as needed by the farmers. Good for the farmer, good for the worker. On Sep 19, the highway patrol was called in to investigate a crime when Ed Nash, a contractor, and 12 farm workers met an unexpected detour. Well, that looks pretty good. You know, I think I'd stop for this myself. Look, you don't, you don't think they'll see the station wagon here, will they? Not a chance. Well, suppose they see it from down the road, before they hit the intersection. Now, look, we've been up and down here, and we've checked it twice. Now, did you ever see it? No, no. Detour wasn't here yesterday. Funny, uh, doesn't look like they're doing any work. Hey, look. We're doing the work, mister. All right. Now you do what you're told and nobody's gonna get hurt. Now get on out of that truck and empty your pockets. Come on, hurry up. You. Get over with the others, huh? Move! Come on, let's have those wallets right here on the blanket. Come on. Throw them down here. Hey, this one's empty. Who's Joe Valentine? Toss him your pay envelope, Joe. Don't try to outsmart him. Kid's right, Pop. Come on, let's have the envelope. Well, now, now, look, I worked hard for this The one. money. Now. All right. Any more envelopes? Look, I'll brisk every one of you if I have to. Wait a minute. These men work hard with their hands on their backs. They deserve a break. They earn every cent they've got. Fine. We'll give them a little benefit in the morning. Now, all of you lie down flat on your stomachs. Come on. You too, Buster. On your face! Now you stay that way, all of you. Get the car ready. Right. Now listen to me closely. The first head that pops up, I'll blow it off. I promise you that. Same promise goes for the whole bunch of you. All right, get out of here now. Joe! 
Joe, are you? Take the truck, somebody. Get a doctor in the highway patrol. Hurry. Hurry. Keep everybody out there. We're leaving right now. Right. Who's out there with them? 1440. Ambulance there yet? There now. Twelve workers and a contractor, huh? Mm-hmm. They'd just been paid, too. Each man had about $200 in cash. That's great. They break their backs all month picking fruit. On a payday, a couple of hoodlums pick their pockets. Let's go. What have you got? Not very much. I got a description of the two men. They were wearing masks. One of these men says he can identify the car. I made an APB on it. Who's the man? Uh, Collins, over there. Mr. Matthews? That's right. I'm Ed Nash, labor contractor for these men. Is there anything I can do? Yeah, I want a list of all your employees. You mean the farm employees? Farm workers, everybody who works for you, anybody who could know where that truck was going. Do you think it was an inside job? Look, whoever did this knew where the truck was going, when it was going to arrive here. Knew it was full of farm workers that had just been paid. You don't get that information from a seed catalog. Okay, Mr. Matthews. You'll have the list this afternoon. I'll check with you at your camp. Latest thing in hijacking. Do it yourself, detours. You Collins? That's right. Matthews, Highway Patrol. They told me you can identify the car used with the holdup men. Uh, yes, sir. I guess I can. What kind of a car was it? As I told the other officer, it was white. An all white convertible with the top down. New or old? New. This year's, I think. I got a look at the first two letters of the license plate KJ. How'd you happen to see the license? This report says the car was hidden by that bank over there. Uh, they backed it up. One man backed up the car and the other one held the gun on us. He's the one that shot Joe Valentine. Have you heard anything about Joe? He hasn't been murdered, has he? We hope not. Thanks. Collins, the only one who saw the white convertible? Uh, yes, sir. What were the others doing? They had their faces in the dust. He was probably the first one to look up. When you finish, let them go back to camp. They need to work now more than ever. Right. Boy, this is something. All those witnesses and just one guy kept his eyes open. Maybe the wounded man saw something the others didn't see. Thanks. Let's go to the hospital. Give me a dime. We ought to deduct it from Collins's take. Come on, hurry it up. I'm just making sure we don't give him more than he deserves. Look, the kid did all right. Better wrap that up in a piece of paper. You got the right address there? I've got it. Mr. Sandy Collins. West Valley Farm Camps. That's a special delivery stamp. I want him to get it in a couple of hours. Yeah, but won't they start wondering? There's no law against receiving mail. Oh, but a special delivery... Look, worry wart. Collins is a nervous wreck. And the longer he waits, the more nervous he's gonna get. Now, the sooner he gets this key, he'll relax, get his money, and then do what he wants to do. 2150 to headquarters. Come in, 2150. We're on our way to the county hospital to talk to the wounded man. Any report on his condition? Yes, sir. It just came in. He was dead on arrival. 10-4. Thirteen robberies and one murder. All in one lot. Everybody's a victim. Nobody's a suspect. Let's go back and start over again, huh?
after the robbery of the farm workers and the shooting of Joe Valentine, Dan Matthews returned to the scene of the crime to re-examine the area for new leads. Let's restage this whole thing. See if we can get another angle. Now, this sketch shows the getaway car on the other side of that bank over there. Want me to park there? Yeah, go ahead. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but I can't see you. Okay. Back it up to the road. Slow. Okay. Well, they couldn't have picked a better spot to park the car. Couldn't see a thing through all that brush. Yeah, I know. Now, the guys were lying face down on the road right over there. Collins says he spotted the getaway car. I couldn't see your car at all. Well, that means they would have had to bring the car all the way around to this side of the bank before you could see it from here. Why would they want to do that? They wouldn't. That's what I mean. You think Collins is lying? I don't know. He's our only witness. Let's give him a chance to explain. Come on. Nash. Hi, Sandy. Thought you were out in the fields with the others. I was, but uh, I came back to see if there was any mail. Next delivery's tomorrow morning. You know that. Well, uh, I was sort of expecting a telegram, maybe a special delivery letter. Something wrong? My mother. She's been pretty sick. Uh, I've been worried about her. My, uh, my brother said he'd let me know. I'm sure she'll be all right. I, uh... I guess I better get back to the field. Right. See you later. Hold it, Collins. Something wrong, Mr. Matthews? We're going to have to take him in for more questioning. What do you want me for? I told you everything I know about the robbery. It's no longer robbery, it's murder. Joe Valentine? Yeah, that's right. Collins is our only link to the killers. Come on, let's go. You know, we're just poor, struggling farm boys. We can't afford to hire fruit pickers and farm hands. Mm, big joke. What are you so jumpy about? Everything's going all right. I'll bet that guy you shot doesn't think so. Will you forget about him? If he's dead, it, we're better off. Look, you promised me and you promised Collins. You said that nobody get hurt, nobody get shot. Just a nice, respectable hijacking. He came after us. What do you expect me to do? I don't like it. I don't like being wanted for murder. They're not after us. They're after two other guys in a nice, white, shiny convertible that doesn't even exist. Oh, we sure hope they are. I'm betting on it, kid. I'm betting my life on it. My life and yours. Now, come on. It's the truth, Mr. Matthews. They got away in a white convertible. I saw it. Collins. 
Take a good look at this sketch. They were parked on this fork of the road. You couldn't have seen it from behind this bank over here. I don't understand this at all. There's a robbery. A man's been shot. You wanted information. I gave you information. And what do you do? You grill me. You, you, you call me a liar. You treat me like I committed the crime. Somebody on the inside gave these men the information they want. Now you're accusing me. I'm not accusing anybody. I'm just saying you couldn't possibly have seen that car. Yet you did see it. I want you to explain that. If you can't... Yeah? Uh, Mr. Nash is here to see you. Ask him to wait. He says it's urgent. He has a special delivery letter for Mr. Collins. Go out and get it. Thank Mr. Nash for me. Were you expecting mail? Yeah. From my mother. Uh, she's been sick. Oh, I see. Mr. Nash knew your word about your mother's health. He brought that and your coat. Did you open it? No, it's your letter. You open it. I'll, uh, I'll read it later. Aren't you worried about your mother? I'd uh, rather read it when I'm alone. It's personal. From home? Yeah. Postmark says Chase Corners. That's a local post office, not your home. You have no right to read my mail. I didn't read it, but you are right now. Coin locker key. My mother would be sick too if she was locked up in a coin locker. Let's go let the old lady out. Cuff him. So much for the news from Washington. Now turning to the domestic scene. This morning's robbery of 12 farm workers in the Chase Corners area has developed into a murder case. Joseph Valentine, age 52, died a few hours ago after stopping three bullets from the gun of one of the two masked bandits who... That doesn't mean a thing to you. You understand? Not a thing. You've been right here on this farm all day long, doing the work we always do, you and me, all day long. You've got no reason and you don't care anything about that robbery. You heard him? It's murder. You weren't there. You had nothing to do with it. It had nothing to do with you. Now, will you remember that? Now, what are you scared of, anyway? If you had any sense, you'd be scared, too. You saw Collins, you saw his face. Look, how do you think he'll feel with a murder rap hanging over his head? He'll bust wide open the minute they put him under pressure. You know, you're in worse shape than he'll ever be. Oh, no, I'm not, because I'm not going to be around long enough to let him pressure me. They've got roadblocks on that highway. They're looking for a white convertible, not a station wagon. I'm going to use that gag just as long as it's warm. coming with me? Yeah, I guess so. In your condition, you're gonna need a chaperone. This adds up to just about one-third the money that was taken off those farm workers. You can't prove anything. You're doing a good job right now, Collins. You're up to your ears in robbery and murder. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't have anything hey, to do with it. It wouldn't happen if you hadn't set it up for your pals. They had the guns, not me. Oh, that's a nice, tidy arrangement. You furnish the victims. They furnish the guns. Come on, you've got a lot of talking to do. Well, wait a minute. If I tell you what you want to know, do I get a break? This isn't a fire sale. We don't make deals. It's murder. You're one of the principals. If I don't talk, you'll never find them. You know that. Oh, that's right. Give them the break. They did the killing. But you're the prisoner and they're out free and they're laughing themselves silly because they made a patsy out here and you still protect them. Boy, you've got a lopsided sense of loyalty. Look, Collins, you know you're letting them get away, two killers? Is this going to make you happier when you're in prison? They're outside laughing themselves sick and sending you cookies at Christmas? Think it over. We'll give you all the time you want. Wait a minute. Maybe, maybe I don't need any more time. What? I, I know where they are. I can tell you all about them. Come on, let's go.
detailed description of Jack and George Willis and their station wagon was volunteered by the frightened Sandy Collins. Within minutes, all highway patrol units in the area were alerted. Sandy Collins was booked at headquarters and Unit 2150 left in pursuit of the suspects. Well, I can't be too far away. They didn't go north, we'd have seen them. They must have gone in the other direction. Let's try a squeeze play. Twenty-one fifty to fourteen forty. Fourteen forty, bye. What's your ten twenty? I'm on the Valley Turnpike, about two miles south of the Rustic Road intersection. Any other units in the area? Negative. Suspect are presumed to be heading your way. They're armed and dangerous. 10 4? 10 4. All right, now take it easy. Let's play this real cozy. Remember, they're looking for a white convertible, not a station wagon. Yeah, I'm not so sure of that. 1440 to 2150. 2150 by. The station wagon is approaching. Answers the description of the suspect's car. Well, we're about five or six miles from your position. Maybe we can run right up their tailpipes. 10 4? 10 4. Well, don't start getting panicky. Hey, take a look at that gun. Well, he's not planning any friendly little get together. We're the only car on the road. I think it's just a routine check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, I'm turning off the highway at Rustic Road, and it's just a little ways back. Don't turn back now. You'll have him right on our necks. Look, if you don't like it, you can get out and walk. Fourteen forty to twenty-one fifty. Twenty-one fifty by. Suspects just reversed their direction. I'm in pursuit. I'll probably meet him head on. Let's see if we can keep him in the middle. 10 4. How close is he, huh? Well, he's too close. Isn't there an intersection down there someplace? Well, there better be. Hey, take a look. We've got company. out of the game. I don't know about the other one, though. All right, you try and draw his fire. I'll go this way. Drop it! Come on, drop it. Get your hands on top of your head. What's this detour? Some gag of yours? This is no gag. It's on a level. The Department of Public Works are making some changes. And so are we. Now, check that guy in the butchers over there. Okay, take him out. I'll call headquarters. See the highway patrol in action again next week. Until then, remember, leave your blood at the Red Cross, not on the highway. This is Roderick Crawford saying, see you next week.